battling the Islamic State, Kurds and other ethnic groups in northern Syria are trying to install an unprecedented political project in the Middle East. Their model of governance was inspired by Abdullah Ocalan, founder of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK, and the libertarian communalism of Murray Bookchin. They call it the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria. <laughs> Even at night, a suffocating heat weighs heavily on the small town of Kamichlie. We get out of the small airport still manned by a few dozen soldiers of the regime and enter into the territory of Rojava, which is controlled by the Syrian Democratic Forces. The SDF are a multi-ethnic force which includes the Kurdish People's Protection Units, commonly known as the YPG, the Women's Protection Units, or YPJ, as well as Arab, Yazidi, and Christian militias. Huge YPG flags sit atop the police barriers in Kamichlie, where the police force of the autonomous government, the Asayash, carefully inspect vehicles. Suicide attacks by terrorists are a constant threat. Northern Syria is divided into three administrative districts, Jazire, Kobani, and Afrin. Each region has a legislative parliament and a district government. A Syrian Democratic Council supervises the three districts, coordinating governance of the entire region. The Legislative Assembly of Jazire District is in Amude, 20 kilometers from Kamachelier. The building is heavily guarded, closed off to traffic, and all visitors are searched. This assembly unites the representatives of political parties who have signed the Rojava Charter, as well as representatives of civil society organizations, which must send two members, a man and a woman. After a minute of silence to pay tribute to the martyrs, work begins. In the regional assembly, everyone speaks their mother tongue language, with translators available if necessary. The government has adopted three official languages, Arabic, Kurdish, and Syriac. Nazira Garia is the co-president of the Legislative Council of Jazira District. She hails from the Christian Syriac community, which includes Chaldeans and Assyrians. Under the Assad regime, they could not study in their native language in public schools. As you see uh, city signs in three languages, uh, you see Syriacs everywhere. For the first time, Syriac or the Aramic language, which is, by the way, the language of Christ, for the first time in uh, in thousands of years, in hundreds of years, is official. Bassam Ishak is the former director of a human rights organization in Syria. He first joined the Syrian National Council, part of the coalition, based in Istanbul, before becoming a volunteer at the autonomous government of Rojava. Uh, I joined the Syrian National Council uh, in late, when it was started late 2011. And at the time, we were supposed to be an alliance of different political powers, and it was supposed to be uh, for the goal of a democratic, pluralistic uh, Syria. But with time, I realized that this is just ink on paper. And what was happening on the ground as the revolution moved from a peaceful demonstration into a uh, civil war, that uh, it, it was very obvious that they have a different agenda and they wanted a religious state in Syria. This is totally against what uh, the Syrian National Council and the Syrian coalition was started for.
so I had to choose between the Syrian National Council and Syrian coalition. Real agenda for a Syria as a religious state, and and other uh, opposition whose real agenda is a Syria as a national Arab state, and a Syria that is a pluralistic state. And to be true to my conscience, I chose Syria a pluralistic state. <laughs> In 1932, Bassam Ishak's father was vice president of the Syrian parliament. When the Syrian president and the president of parliament resigned, he became president of Syria, but only for 24 hours. One way to make sure that we don't have a dictator again in Damascus is to divide power between regions and make sure that we don't have a new Assad in Damascus. The Syrian Democratic Forces and the Autonomous Government of Northern Syria are fighting for a democratic federation within Syria's borders. The Autonomous Federation was self-proclaimed in 2014 and is not recognized by anybody. It is not supported by the Syrian government and certainly not backed by Turkey or any other nation. There is also an internal opposition which is close to the Iraqi Kurdish leader Masoud Barzani and which pushes for an independent Kurdistan. Nareen Matini receives journalists at her home in Kwamishli because the offices of her party have been closed by the authorities of the autonomous government. They could have applied for a license as a party without having signed the charter and, uh, and received a, uh, you know, a license. But by doing this, they feel that they would be giving uh, a, a credit and, and sort of approving of the self-administration. And all Syrian groups play this all the time, uh, all of them, whether they're Kurdish, Syriacs, uh, Arabs, all Syrian groups do that. I'm not going to give you legitimacy if I'm not the leader. <laughs> Because of the lack of international recognition, the Autonomous Administration of Northern Syria is forced to go through intermediaries for all of its economic transactions. Rumelan lies 100 kilometers to the east of Qamishli. It is near the border of Iraq that oil wells can be found. The region is rich in oil but lacks refineries. Members of the Autonomous Government's Energy Commission show us makeshift oil wells which they plan to replace with modern, more productive refineries. Due to the lack of oil production equipment, the autonomous government is forced to sell much of their oil through intermediaries to the Syrian government, which delivers the refined product at a higher price, 80 cents per liter. The multitude of small, local, makeshift refineries sell gasoline at 20 cents per liter. But their negative impact on the environment is worrying. Pungent black smoke shrouds the countryside. Skin diseases and respiratory problems are multiplying. It's very bad pollution for the atmosphere, but we really don't have any uh, alternative uh, solution. We need uh, modern refineries now. We, we try to uh, replace them with uh, electrical uh, refineries. <laughs> Samir and Abdul Karim promised to hire these workers in the modern refineries which will be constructed when the blockade is lifted. Before the start of the war, in 2011, this region produced 380,000 barrels of crude oil each day, a third of the country's total production. Due to the fighting, production has fallen by 70 percent. Each time the Syrian Democratic Forces liberate a new territory, the autonomous government must provide gas, water and electricity. 
the northern autonomous region of Syria works in spite of all the difficulties, but long lines at gas stations are proof that shortages exist. Uh. An engineer in the Energy Commission, Ziad Rostem, explains that Turkey and its Kurdish allies in Iraq prevent the construction of modern refineries in northern Syria and block the importation of spare parts for the dams along the Euphrates River. The Euphrates provides the second largest source of electricity generation. <laughs> When the water level of the Euphrates gets lower than 122 meters above sea level, the electrical turbines cannot run. They require at least three more meters of water. Since the Kurds took control of the dam, Turkey has deliberately reduced the level of water flow. Temperatures reach 45 degrees Celsius in summer. The blazing sun and often cloudless blue skies mean that solar energy should provide a real alternative one day. <laughs> We cross northern Syria from the east to the west, heading to Kobani and Membij. Long after the liberation of Kobani, this area remained ruled by the Islamic State. Between Serekaniye and Tal Abiyad, the population is a mix of Arabs, Kurds, Turkmens, and Circassians. Two international reports have made accusations against the PYD in areas freed from the Islamic State. Human Rights Watch in 2014 and Amnesty International in 2015 wrote, by the deliberate destruction of civilian homes, the destruction of entire villages in certain cases, and displacing local inhabitants without any military justification, the autonomous administration has abused its authority and flagrantly violated international humanitarian law in a manner which constitutes war crimes. Local officials categorically reject these accusations. <laughs> Rafael Labruja has conducted his own investigation. He visited Tal Abiyad and Serekaniye in December 2015, where he spoke with local residents, their Arab representatives, as well as YPG fighters. Sur place, quand les YPG, donc les forces ennemies, sa majorité kurde, sont arrivées pour libérer la zone, il y a eu un ordre d'évacuation de la population. Il y avait des mines, c'est-à-dire que les zones étaient minées et c'était dangereux que les gens reviennent. The new authorities have allowed those with no blood on their hands to return. But they have refused to allow Kurds to reclaim their lands, which had been confiscated by the Syrian government. Il y avait des Kurdes qui espéraient retrouver les terres qu'ils avaient perdues euh, suite au, à la politique euh, d'arabisation et euh, ils ne les ont pas retrouvées. Euh, C'est-à-dire que euh, l'auto-administration du Rojava, dans l'espoir de gagner les populations euh, arabes à leur euh, système politique, n'ont pas redistribué les terres aux Kurdes. Voilà. In this highly diverse region, there certainly was a base of support for the Islamic State. 
Today, Turkmen, Arabs, and other ethnicities are represented in the municipal councils. In March 2017, the United Nations Council for Human Rights published a report which rejected all allegations of ethnic cleansing by the Kurds. The commission found no evidence to substantiate claims that YPG or SDF forces ever targeted Arab communities on the basis of ethnicity, nor that YPG cantonal authorities systematically sought to change the democratic composition of territories under their control through the commission of violations directed against any particular ethnic group. However, the UN report criticizes forced recruitment for military service. This is normal during wartime, responds Hakan Kello, co-president of the Legislative Council of Jazeera District. Throughout our trip, many Kurds complained non-stop about what they considered to be the strategic errors of the Syrian opposition. The militarization of anti-government protests and their links with Turkey, Qatar and Saudi Arabia. They also reject the accusation that Kurds have colluded with the Syrian government in Damascus. Muslim Nabo was arrested while studying at the university in Latakia because he and his friends published a magazine in the Kurdish language. He was beaten for three months and released after one year and one week, which is the maximum detention time permitted without a trial. We suffered a lot from uh, Assad regime. We were uh, arrested. Uh, some of our uh, political uh, figures were uh, killed during the uh, torture during uh, Assad regime in the prisons. We skirt a seemingly endless wall, 500 kilometers long, constructed by Turkey and encroaching upon Syrian territory. Made of concrete and topped with barbed wire, it reinforces a feeling of isolation of a region long considered as the breadbasket of Syria. Even though July has only just begun, huge fields of different cereals have already been harvested. Flocks of sheep roam in search of their next meal. Agricultural workers, usually very young, started the day early to avoid the afternoon heat. Near Tal Abyad, the road passes along a rushing river. It used to be just a trickle of water, but Turkey has diverted the water of the Euphrates into secondary streams, which benefits irrigation. But the lower water levels of the Euphrates has also lowered the production of electricity. Located on the other side of the Euphrates, to the west, is the town of Membij. The town was liberated from the Islamic State in August 2016 by the Syrian Democratic Forces. The battle was ferocious, and the SDF had to fight Turkish troops as well as parts of the Free Syrian Army. Turkey's red line, which cannot be crossed, is west of the Euphrates. By reclaiming Membij, Kurds wanted to link their two districts of Jazire and Kobani with Afrin, which lays even further to the west. The Kurds are a minority in this region, but they have ceaselessly repeated that they do not want to create a Kurdistan only for the Kurds, but a democratic federation for everyone. Kurds only compose around 30% of the population and have historically lived peacefully with the area's many Arabs, Turkmens, and Circassians. Membij, even more than any other town in northern Syria, is a symbol and a laboratory for peaceful multi-ethnic cohabitation. In the center of Membij, Ali Hatem, who is an Arab and a former chauffeur, sells cigarettes. Under the Islamic State, this was a crime which could be punished with death. Mu'ayyid 
Hamid Durwish is not pleased with the ban on makeshift oil refineries. But the neighborhood pharmacist prefers gas shortages to the risk of deadly diseases. No, 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 and he has the same critical view of the Syrian opposition. Members of the Membij Civil Council welcomed us at their building in the center of town, where the scars of war are still visible. Abir al Aboud hails from a major Arab tribe. Beni Sultan. Along with other Arab civil council members, she defends the new pluralist political project against the interference from Turkey or other regional countries. لم تؤثر فقط على المكون الكردي يعني باسم الدين الإسلامي أو مثلا دولة الإسلامية كأنه بدها مثلا المكون العربي مثلا هو الحامي أو الراعي للإسلام فقط وجود داعش أول ما أثر على وجود العرب Abdul Ahman Betran is a judge and member of the Supreme Court of Mimbij region. They have found judicial solutions to conflicts created by forced marriage. طبعا اجى واحد غريب اخذ البنت كان ابن عمه بطريقة يعني ارشلون وحاليا نحن يا اخي مكلفين شيوخ العشائر انه ندخل بهالموضوع ونحل لانه لحتى الان ابن العم بدي عم بيهدد وبدي يضرب وبدي يساوي وبدي كذا وبدي كذا بتعرف نحن مع حريه المراه وحريه اختيار المراه نحن معاها The local authorities must also grant significant weight to the dramas of the recent past. Some citizens were horribly tortured by the Islamic State, and spontaneous acts of revenge against former collaborators cannot always be prevented.
Abir Mahmoud is a member of the Council for Reconciliation and Integration. She has waited for three years for information regarding her husband, who was arrested by the Islamic State. However, she insists on the necessary efforts to obtain reconciliation. <laughs> The chance to reintegrate is offered to everybody, except for jihadists arrested or convicted for blood crimes. Those who are held in prison are treated according to the Geneva Convention, which the YPG has signed. The souk of Membij is filled with spices, cakes, meat and pastries, in a tangible example of cultural diversity. Arab fruit sellers work alongside Kurdish butchers and Circassian bakers. Amin is a Turkmen, but he rejects the idea that Turkmen only support Turkey. On the road to Kobani, along the frontier wall between Kobani and the Turkish town of Surush, an elderly YPG soldier stands guard. The Turkish border is just 50 meters away. The gates are closed. Two years ago, Kobani was almost completely leveled by war. Today, Kobani is a beehive of economic activity. Businesses and residential buildings are constructed next to homes partially destroyed by missiles and bombs. The Battle of Kobani, which occurred between September 2014 and January 2015, marked a major turning point in the battle against the Islamic State. After taking control of Mosul in Iraq and Raqqa in Syria, Kobani is where the Islamic State registered its first major defeat. But the human toll Kobani paid to be liberated was terrible. <laughs> In a counterattack perpetrated by the Islamic State, this young man lost 11 members of his family. This toddler was saved from the carnage, one of the few survivors. At the time of the massacre, he was three months old. Hi, how are you? How are you? <laughs> In each city and village across Rojava, the portraits of martyrs, many of them women, are everywhere. 
It's during the Battle of Kobani that the world discovered the role played by Kurdish women. Kongrestar is the name given to the women's house in the town. In this quiet street, a huge building hosts women who are subjected to domestic violence. Our hosts insist that gender equality is a key pillar of Rojava's social contract. Gender equality legislation was among the first laws voted by the autonomous government. To resolve all types of disputes, a communal system of conflict resolution has been created. Members of the communes are elected by the locals, and they can be revoked at any time. Last year, more than 2,000 communes were registered in the district of Kobani alone. They were able to find a solution to nearly 10,000 complaints, with only 500 advancing into the judicial system. Here, we find the direct application of communalist principles inspired by Murray Bookchin. <laughs> Communes also permit laws against economic monopoly to be upheld in every neighborhood. This preserves the purchasing power of the average person and prevents local businesses from taking advantage of the wartime scarcity to inflate their prices. Inside the women's house, along the wall of the lobby, is a reproduction of a mural painted by an artist from the Gaza Strip. A young woman rises out of the ruins in a symbol of hope in the future. Samira relates what her daughter said before leaving for the front. Kobani's slain fighters are buried in the martyr's cemetery. Berivan and Fidan fought in the liberation of Membij. Their friend Jihan was killed. Hmm? These children clean the gravestone of their father. In school, an entirely new method of education has been implemented. This required teachers to receive a new training. Under the Syrian government, education was only conducted in Arabic. The new authorities in northern Syria have decided, after extensive consultation, to officially recognize three languages which begin to be taught in public schools at the primary level. <laughs> Dildar Kobani is a member of Rojava's Board of Education. لیر هم زمان عربی تی داین هم زمان کردی زاروک جرفا یک حیات گیر فاسی و زمان خودایی کی دخونه یه کرد کردی دخونن عرب عربی دخونن جی سوریان دهی سوریانی دخونن. But putting into place a new system of education has not been without numerous difficulties. یک مثلا پسگیری که من نوید جدیه نه مثلا من آش پسگیری که من آش چاپ کردن پرتوکا جدی پسگیری که من آش 
Men par, men det där var nej. Men det där var helt just det. Men par, du miljoner produkter köper. Nästa tillfälle produkter med par sju man hade nåt i mina. Och an har ju ge an en ge prata att hålla för att han är att hålla för att han är inte att han är inte produkter. Jag precis gick jag till dig med. Men så det med mat bara, men så det precis gick jag med mat bara. Och så så där en pyr. Mat bara, och så så där här parcha parcha med parcha parcha. Han är inte nu nu tamam pyr. یعنی مسئله آم آمبارگو تأثیری که جدی سر می‌دهد. اگر آم آمبارگو نه با امکانی مه با اندرفته هم من من هرچه خور راحت چاپ کرده با من هرچه راحت گشت دستی مه حتی نه چیکه لکی خونده کرا کتاب نگهش دست. And each time the FDS and YPG liberate a new area, they need to provide government services such as water, electricity, and education. In these regions, schools have not been in session since 2011. Some accuse the Kurds of wanting to slant the education system in their favor. او کردن و عربا بکن کرد. یعنی عربا چه بسیاری معانیه چه هم آسمیله کرینه خاص نمت نه بکن. این یه ودی آیات کرد وی به نسل نه بکن. دست بیکی هنگی مزوری کیشا دست میل دست بیکی نو عربا. بی پشتی کو من مناهج آنی من مناهج آنی اینی مناهج مناهجی کردیش مچیکر و یه عربیش مچیکر من مناهج عربی بر دوا مگو اولی میذه کن. ندا شیخین وان، ندا دودورین وان، وقتی که آمدن از جدیدین ایدی آب خوکاتن حلقاتی. And the support from international institutions is conditional. هریمین کو مرزگار کری، یونس دو خزاب ریا پروردی چاره کری دبلتی بگری نه. یونس دو بی اگر من از جد دبلتی هم بدن، اگر هنوز که نزد بستان دیکم، از چیکم، از این زنم آمر بیم، اما نه اگر من از جد دبلتی نبم، پروردی دبلتی نبم، نیز نه. Besides water, electricity, and education, the autonomous government needs to provide infrastructure and health services. At Hevasor, the Kurdish branch of the Red Crescent, pharmacist Ahmed Sheiki explains how Hevasor provides extensive medical aid to refugees from Raqqa. Hevasor is not the only one who is in Raqqa. لعين عيسنا وحطاني بر الرقب خنا يعني عم دورنا فريق ما متحرك ما فريق توزيع كرنا كي دورنا وين دورنا جرنية دورنا عين عيسى دورنا محمودية دورنا طبقة لأنه أز دورنا مستشفى السيدلي مستشفى دورنا جي حالات مستشفى أز جد بينا ونها مثلا سسج كوبنا سه حالة كوتنج كوبنا بالمقابل ده حالة الرقيب at Kobani's hospital, refugees from Raqqa arrive in huge numbers, as the war created many casualties. Many of these Syrian refugees are thus internal refugees. In northern Syria, they hope to find security and safety. Kurds take care of them without any aid from the European Union. This Arab family is from Raqqa. During their escape, the Islamic State used a small airplane to drop fragmentation bombs. This family fled the town of Tabqa via a road off the main route, but the mother stepped on a landmine laid by the Islamic State. She died instantaneously. The father and his two sons were hurt. This man lost everything. This patient had returned to check on his house when he stepped on a landmine. His two legs have been amputated below the knee. On the road to Raqqa, the self-proclaimed capital of the Islamic State, we stop at Ayin Isa, the military headquarters of the Syrian Democratic Forces. These militias are heading to the front. The autonomous government requires a military service of nine months, but most of the fighters going to the front are volunteers. 
This fighter is stenciling Syrian Democratic Forces on a wall in Arabic, Kurdish, and Syriac in a sign promoting a newly democratic Syria. After more than two hours on the road, across a countryside mutilated by half-destroyed buildings and bridges, we reach the outskirts of Raqqa. Snipers and jihadist attacks slow the progress of the SDF and YPG. Upon entering the city, a makeshift hospital in a former garage treats those who have been lightly wounded. Ajit Maktala comes from an Arabic village called Sirakaniye, located between Kobani and Kwamishli. We approach the front line of combat and increase our speed. In a building close to the fighting, a group of young Yazidi soldiers are getting ready to fight. Yazidis are a Kurdish religious minority who mostly live in Iraq. One of them swears they will get revenge on behalf of all the female victims of the Islamic State. From the terrace of this building in a zone controlled by the Syrian Democratic Forces, one witnesses a tragic panorama of a city that once held 200,000 people. But now the streets are empty and only a few buildings are still standing. Inside, the volunteers are sharing their meal. Everyone listens attentively to radio exchanges between one of their comrades and the headquarters of the SDF, which sends their instructions. Once Raqqa is liberated, the fighters do not plan to remain. They plan to do what they have done in Membij and elsewhere. They will transfer political and military power to a regional town council composed by the local inhabitants. Fighters have not taken a long break. The Islamic State is encircled. But suicide counterattacks and snipers continue to wreak havoc. Our trip ends in the basement of the military headquarters of the YPG and YPJ. The commander of the YPJ, Nasreen Abdullah, tells us that nothing was ready for the implementation of this democratic and pluralistic political project. They had to start from scratch. The current assistance from the United States to the Syrian Democratic Forces is highly debated. Nasreen Abdullah confirms that they do share a command center with the United States, but that Washington's assistance is limited to the military and the fight to eradicate the Islamic State. There is not any economic support or support for the democratic political project. And will one day Damascus accept a federal system? democratic <laughs> We <laughs> 
تو هدف ما کو ام مراد که ملیه جدی بدن چه کردن نیا چون کو شخص سیستم ملیه جدی نه درج لاتن امید حمود نه لوشان دن پریبلم یک شوا ولات گوته دشوارش چی بود یک شوا سوریه جی زاتن اگر سیستم دموکرات با سیستم فدرال با افشار نداشت کرد.